What's the truth about the cavemen? Is it possible for an ape-like creature to turn to a human? Well, it depends what you mean by caveman, okay? There are people today who live in caves, okay? We don't call them half ape, half human. There's the world's most wanted caveman right there, Osama bin Laden. There's a former caveman. <clears throat> I think someone's trying to make a monkey out of us. Was your ancestor an ape-like creature? I don't think so. Let's talk about a few of the so-called cavemen. We could spend hours on this topic, but we got more to cover here. Uh, Nebraska man was used for years as evidence for evolution. All they found for Nebraska man was one tooth. That is the entire Nebraska man right there. One tooth. Then they built an entire man from that one tooth and later made him a wife. Now you have to really be good to know what his wife looks like from his tooth. Okay, but these are professionals. Don't question them, okay? They know what they're talking about. Later they found out the tooth actually came from a pig. There's the real Nebraska man right there. How about Piltdown Man, named after the gravel pit it was found in in Piltdown, England. Somebody took a human skull and an ape's jaw. They filed them down and fooled everybody. In 1912, they discovered the Piltdown Man. It was in the New York Times. Darwin theory proved true from the Piltdown Man. It was going to be used in 1925 at the Scopes Monkey Trial as part of the evidence for evolution. But the judge said, the question is not, is there evidence for evolution? The question is, did he violate the law of teaching? So he was found guilty of breaking the law. The teacher was John T. Scopes down here in Dayton, Tennessee. But Piltdown Man was a hoax. Somebody had taken an ape's jawbone and a human skull, broke the uh, TMJs off, made them fit together, and fooled everybody, filed the teeth down. For 40 years, it was in the textbooks as proof for evolution. It was a fraud, exposed as a fraud. 1953. Neanderthal man is still in your textbooks, used in your town here in Knoxville, Tennessee. But it's been proven years ago it cannot possibly be a missing link. Back in 1856, they found a skeleton petrified, a man petrified, in this valley called the Neander Valley, and they named it Neanderthal man. The back was bent over. Well, apes walk on four legs and man walks on two, so when the Darwin's theory became popular, they resurrected the Neanderthal man and said, oh, wow, maybe he's slowly evolved and he's coming up. Well, they've known from the very beginning it was an old man with arthritis who's slowly going down. He's not coming up at all. <laughs> He's headed down. But they still keep him in the textbooks. About 300 Neanderthals have been found. Their brains are bigger than ours. Their bone structure was incredibly strong. They said they had so many muscles that the average Neanderthal could probably pick up the average NFL linebacker and fling him over the goalpost. Phenomenal strength in the Neanderthals. They gave the same skull to nine different artists and said, what did he look like in life? They got nine different answers. They said, what would you like him to look like? We're artists, you know, we can make him, you want him ape-like or human-like? You tell us what you want, we'll do it. Jack Cuazzo, a friend of mine from New Jersey, has been a dentist for 32 years. He came and spoke at our conference a few weeks ago at the boot camp we had <clears throat> in Pensacola. He studied the actual Neanderthal skulls in Europe. He said, these Neanderthals are just perfectly normal humans that are living to really great age. See, before the flood came, the people lived to be 900. After the flood, lifespans dropped off to 400, and then 200, and then 100. But that's still a long time to live. And it's a simple fact, the bones of your eyebrow ridge never stop growing. So if you could live to be three or 400 years old, your eyebrow ridge would stick way out. People today, that use their jaws a lot, like the Aborigines in Australia are always using their jaws as a vice. They don't carry a toolbox with them. Their eyebrow ridge sticks out really far because of the chewing muscles. It pulls on the bone. The Neanderthals are perfectly normal human that are living to be two or three hundred years old. That's all they are. Their brain's bigger than ours. They're not subhuman at all. They're just really old human. There's an aborigine on the far left over there. See the eyebrow ridge sticking out? That's from chewing or using your jaw muscles a lot. There are a lot of different shapes of head. You could line up the folks in Knoxville, Tennessee and prove evolution just by the shape of the skull <laughs> and drive downtown. You'll see what I'm talking about, okay? Here's Cro-Magnon Man, still used in the textbooks, yet it's perfectly normal human. Why on earth is that considered a missing link? They've got one in there called um, Homo sapien is modern man. He's listed as Cro-Magnon. It's, it's not a missing link at all. One they've got in there now is called Australopithecus afarensis. 
That was proven wrong in 18, I mean, in 1973. 30 years ago, proven wrong. Why are they keeping that in the textbooks as evidence for evolution? They've got Australopithecus africanus, or afarensis, better known as Lucy. How many have ever heard of Lucy before? Donald Johansson found Lucy in 1974, Ethiopia. He had gone there with a grant to look for missing links. Somebody gave him some money, said, here, go find a missing link. If you don't find one, no more money. Two weeks before his grant money expired, he discovered Lucy. Highly motivated, I suspect. And that would be a suspect, by the way, in a court of law, you know. Lucy was three feet tall. It was obviously a chimpanzee of some kind. Now, the bones of the skull were crushed thoroughly. Could not tell anything about the skull. But when they put it together for your kid's textbook, they can make it half human, half ape. They named it Lucy because they were listening to the song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Very popular back then, which, by the way, has the initials LSD, which they must have been on when they found this thing. But uh, the knee joint that was labeled Lucy's knee in National Pornographic, uh, Geographic was actually found a mile and a half away and 200 feet deeper. But National Geographic labeled it Lucy's knee. It's not Lucy's knee. It's a mile and a half away, for heaven's sake, okay? There's quite a controversy about that knee joint still. But this, the knee joint is the best evidence they have that Lucy was becoming a human. Because an ape has the lower and upper leg that are in a straight line with each other. A human leg goes up to your knee and angles off to the side because your hips are wider than your knees. Lucy's knee angled off to the side. The femur angled. And Donald said, see, that proves she's becoming a human. No. Any monkey that climbs trees has an angled femur. What he found was a tree-climbing monkey. It's not proof it's becoming a human. He said, well, the bones are slightly bigger than a regular ape. Well, that's true. It doesn't prove it's becoming a human. The bones of a Clydesdale are slightly bigger than a regular horse. That doesn't prove it's becoming a truck, for heaven's sake, okay? What he found was a heavy-duty chimpanzee, and probably the pre-flood chimpanzees and everything was probably more heavy-duty. If they're living longer, much healthier, that's all he found. There are big horses and little horses today, by the way. St. Louis Zoo put human feet on their Lucy display. Not one foot bone or hand bone was found. Not one. Every other australopithecine that's been found has curled toes. Professor Menton at Washington University said, the statue is a complete misrepresentation. That's a big fancy word for lie. I prefer, I prefer smaller words. It's a lie. The zoo director said, zoo officials have no plans to knuckle under. We cannot be updating every exhibit based on every new piece of evidence. We look at the overall exhibit and the impression it creates, and we think this impression it creates is correct. Uh, Bruce, are you telling me you would lie to kids coming through your zoo just to get an impression across to them that evolution is true? You mean your theory is more important than the facts? That's exactly correct. They will lie to the kids going through these science centers and zoos to make them believe this evolution theory. And there are lies in the textbooks, like 60 of them. We cover that on video number four, lies in the textbooks. In Africa, they found perfectly normal human footprints in a layer of ash that had turned to stone. Perfectly normal human footprints. But the footprints were in ash, supposed to be three and three quarter million years old. They studied the footprints and said, wow, these footprints are exactly the same as ours today. Russell Tuttle, University of Chicago, studied the footprints carefully. He went and found a place where people never wear shoes. They never wear shoes, ever. And he studied their footprints. He had them run through the mud, walk through the mud, you know, jog through the mud, trot, skip. He said the footprints of these people that never wear shoes are exactly like the footprints found in Laetoli, Africa. Identical. And then he said, if the Laetoli footprints were not known to be so old, we would conclude they were made by a member of our own genus. In other words, if we didn't know better, we would think a human made these. Well, how do you know better? Oh, because the rock is too old. This is an example of where the evolution theory is a hindrance to common sense and to scientific research. It's one of the greatest hindrances to science. It's not part of science. It's counterproductive to science. Then National Geographic put human-ape-like human ape mixture features on these uh, creatures walking through this ash. Now, keep in mind, not one bone was found. No bones are found. If you find perfectly normal human footprints, what would justify you putting dark-skinned, ape-like creatures walking there on your drawing? And if I was African-American, I'd get upset that they always use dark skin on the missing links, like there's some kind of, you know, darker skin is less evolved. <laughs> That's what they're trying to imply here. And why did they add this toe separation? 
Notice the big toe is separated away from the rest of them on the picture. They did it on purpose because it's a real serious problem going from an ape-like foot to a human foot. Apes have a toe that sticks off to the side like a thumb. That's so they can grab a, tr a tree branch and hang by their back feet. You can't do that. Okay? If you want to practice it, I'd suggest you start on a low branch for practice, okay? <laughs> You're going to hurt your head. But here they have four million years of bipedalism, and they gave every one of these so-called missing links human feet. Because the foot is a serious problem for the evolutionist. Charles Oxner studied Lucy and said, the bones of Lucy represent an animal that is not in the line of humans. It's not a missing link. He did a computer multivariant analysis of the bones, okay? There could be these creatures, the little ape-like creatures that walk upright, still alive in Sumatra today. Lucy may represent an animal that is still alive. Peking man was used for years as evidence for evolution. Everything disappeared during World War II. But they found a cave with a bunch of crushed monkey skulls in there. The skull had been smashed, and they found a bunch of human tools. And so some brilliant scientist said, wow, these monkeys are learning to make tools. Oh, and they're practicing on their head. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Let's keep that one right over here. Well, duh. They didn't tell anybody. They found 10 normal humans in the same cave, skeletons of humans. See, in some cultures, they like to eat monkey brains. You ever seen Indiana Jones? Mm-hmm. They just found a cave where they were eating monkeys. That's where they had their feasts or something. It's not a missing link. Homo erectus is still in the textbooks. Homo erectus used to be called Java man. Then they changed it to Pithecanthropus erectus and now called Homo erectus. It was found by Dr. Dubois, a Dutch anatomist, who went to Indonesia purposely to try to find missing links. He hired a bunch of prison convicts to go dig for him. He wasn't even there when they found it. What they found was an ape's skull cap, three human teeth, and a thigh bone found a year later, 50 feet away. Du Bois, du Bois put them all together and said, we have a missing link here. You don't even know those animal bones go together. Three teeth, thigh bone, and a skull cap from an ape. This was also going to be used in 1925 as evidence for evolution at the Scopes Monkey Trial. The Java Man. The famous anatomist uh, Virchow said, in my opinion, this creature is, a, is an animal, a giant gibbon. In fact, the thigh bone has not the slightest connection with the skull. Dubois hid the fact that he found two human skulls in the same area. He put those under his bed under the floor. Like Edgar Allan Poe, you know, telltale heart, only this was telltale head. But there's no evidence of how man evolved at all. Fossil evidence for evolution for uh, humans is fragmentary. Fossil evidence of chimpanzee evolution is absent altogether. There is no evidence of how chimpanzees evolved. But yet you have articles in the magazines all the time, you know, about evolution. Where are we going? I can tell you that. You're going straight to hell if you don't accept Christ. It's real simple. That's a no-brainer. In Skull, they were going to have a big display of the orc man. Orce, O-R-C-E, the orc man. They were going to put the, have a big you know, a party for the orc man they discovered until they discovered it's actually a piece of a skull fragment from a donkey four months old. That was going to be the missing link. A dolphin's rib had been labeled as human collarbone in the museum for a long time. So somebody said, oh, that's a dolphin's rib. That's not a human collarbone. The Hobbit was just found here in 19, or 2004. The Hobbit was a little bitty, a tiny human, probably a result of uh, secondary microcephaly dwarfism. Just a normal human, about three and a half feet tall. There are people like that today running around the planet. Okay. There's a good book on the so-called cavemen, if you want to read this, if you're being taught this in school. Get the book by Marvin Lubenow, Bones of Contention. Excellent book. It'll really put everything into perspective for you. The only missing link I can find is up between these guys' ears. You know, something is missing. Somebody's professors spend all their free time digging in the dirt looking for bones. My dog does the same thing. But we don't make the taxpayers pay his salary while he does it, okay? Now, most states have laws requiring textbooks to be accurate. Florida has one. California has one. Texas has one. Wisconsin has one. Alabama has one. The law says textbooks should be accurate. Minnesota says teachers shall not deliberately suppress or distort subject matter. But Minnesota textbooks are still teaching all these as evidence for evolution. When they, all the ones in the red circle have been proven, they cannot possibly be a missing link. By the way, the Minnesota textbook, and most textbooks now, instead of calling man Homo sapien, like we used to be called, they're now called Homo sapien sapien. Wow, what's that mean? Well, sapien means wise. So we're the wise, wise man. 
See, the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And if you think your grandpa swung by his tail from a tree, you're a fool. Plain and simple, okay? This textbook says, he's the daddy of us all. Oh, that's silly. You don't know he's the daddy of anybody. Do you find bones in the dirt? You don't know it's the daddy of anybody. It's just the mother of all mammals from the Smithsonian. If you find bones, you don't know it's the mother of anything. See, if you find fossil in the dirt, all you know is it died. You couldn't prove it had any kids, and you sure couldn't prove it had different kids. And why would you think a bone you found in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do, which is produce something other than their kind? No fossil would count as evidence in a court of law, as evidence for evolution in a court of law. 